This is a recording of our playbook. Download the playbook, configuration spreadsheet, and ABA lab environment from our website. Welcome to our whiteboard drawing, Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, Dial Plan for Call Forwarding, and Voicemail Integration. You don't have a dial plan until you have a solution for call forwarding and voicemail. In this drawing, we look at a dial plan covering all of our call forwarding options, including AAR, CFER, and voicemail. For an overview of the Enterprise 20 dial plan build, see the drawing Dial Plan Build Overview. The configuration for the Enterprise 20 cluster used for this training can be viewed here. A username and password to log in is provided here. Remember our objectives for the dial plan from the discussion and dial plan overview. In this drawing, we focus on the third objective. Call forwarding works like users expect. If they can forward a call to a number, then callers will be redirected to that number. Call forwarding increases the chances that a call will complete by forwarding calls that would otherwise fail to different numbers. We can forward calls to different numbers based on different conditions. We can forward calls to different numbers based on whether the caller is internal or external. We have options for allowing users to manage their own call forwarding settings, and call forwarding is part of the dial plan. We need to understand call forwarding behavior and we need to provide forwarding calling search spaces. We can call forward to voicemail. Configuration of forwarding to voicemail is different than other call forwarding. We need to include a voicemail component in our dial plan. We look at the voicemail component of the Enterprise 20 dial plan in this drawing. The CECM is a collaboration product. The whole point is to facilitate collaboration. One way to facilitate collaboration is to maximize the chance of calls being successful. Placing excessive restrictions on a confusing call forwarding scheme is not going to help. If our users can make themselves more reachable with a flexible self-service call forwarding deployment, then we can pat ourselves on the back. Can we implement that? Sure we can. This drawing has four parts, call forwarding options, call forwarding implementation, AAR and CFER, and dial plan for voicemail integration and final fixes. There are a variety of options for call forwarding. Call forwarding can be configured for different conditions. Forward all, forward all calls, Forward busy. Forward the call if the line is busy, i.e. the number of calls is equal to or greater than the busy trigger. Forward no answer. Forward the call if the line is unanswered after the no answer ring duration. Forward no coverage. Forward the call if we sent the caller to a hunt list that failed to answer. Forward unregistered, CFER. Forward the call if your phone is unregistered. For example, CIPC is not running a phone is unplugged, or the remote site has experienced a WAN failure. And forward no bandwidth. Forward the call via the PSTN if there is no bandwidth for an internal call. This is also called Automated Alternate Routing, or AAR. Here are the call forwarding options for a line, as viewed from the Cisco Unified CM Administration pages. These options have calling search spaces that we use to control the forwarding destinations. Automated alternate routing is configured differently. The calling search space is on the calling device or its device pool. That makes a big difference. Call forward all is special because it can be configured from the phone without any credentials. Anyone can call forward all a line on a phone by selecting the call forward all soft key and entering the forwarding destination.
You need to be careful about the calling search space used to control this. The CUCM GUI allows you to specify a secondary search space so that the line device approach can be used. We worked at one enterprise where on Friday afternoons, an employee would call forward all a co-worker's line to a number in Switzerland where his girlfriend lived. On Saturday, he'd call his co-worker and the call would be forwarded to his girlfriend in Switzerland. He'd spend hours chatting. One day, someone called the Swiss number when the suspected employee was on vacation. He answered. He was fired. Danger. Call forward all is a high risk for toll fraud. Users can log into the user pages to configure call forward all and forwarding for these other conditions. Forward busy. Forward no answer. Forward no coverage. And forward unregistered or CFER. Here's what the administrator sees. Here's what the user sees on the user line settings web page. Users will see this if the Show Call Forwarding Enterprise parameter is set to Show All Settings. For these other conditions, users must log in with their credentials to make changes. Forward Busy, Forward No Answer, Forward No Coverage, and Forward Unregistered, or CFER. The toll fraud threat is less when users must log in to configure the destination. Finding the culprit is certainly easier. Here's what the user sees on the user line settings web page if the show call forwarding enterprise parameter is set to show only forward all. Call forward all shows up on the user home web page. We can hide call forward all configuration from the user by setting the show call forwarding enterprise parameter to hide all settings. We use calling search spaces to control the destinations to which calls can be forwarded. Call forwarding calling search spaces are configured differently than the calling search spaces used to control calling from lines. Except for call forward all, there is only a single calling search space to configure, so the line device approach to class of service is hard to apply. While we have two calling search spaces for call forward all, we don't have the option of applying a line calling search space to the activating device calling search space. This causes issues for mobile users because device mobility acts only on device calling search spaces. More on this in the next drawing. There are two ways to configure the call forward all calling search space. With activating device line calling search space, with activating device line calling search space, the same numbers can be configured as destinations as can be dialed from the line. With configured calling search space, the forward all calling search space acts like the line and the secondary calling search space for forward all acts like the device. If we can dial E911 and possibly international or restricted numbers from the line, then with activating device line calling search space users can configure these numbers for forwarding, so we won't use this option. We'll use with configured calling search space, for example, for Hamilton 601. What we should do depends on our implementation of mobility. We'll discuss that in the next drawing. There's only a single calling search space for the other forwarding conditions. That's a problem for us because we are using the line device approach. We only have internal and unrestricted options available. Again, our implementation of mobility affects how we configure this. So what should we do? Do we let users configure some or all of their destinations themselves? What destinations can be configured for the different conditions? What calling search spaces should we apply? What will our end user training look like? What will we tell our users? What will we tell our users to explain how call forwarding works? What did the CVDs have to say? Both the telephony using Cisco UCM and Unified Communications using Cisco BE6000 CVDs offer a similar 10-digit dial plan. The CVD uses a line device model, a base calling search space on the device for E911, and internal calling. 
a traditional calling search space on the line with local, long distance, and international patterns to supplement the base calling search space. With the CVD line device model, for call forward all, we can supplement the base calling search space with a traditional line calling search space with local, long distance, and international patterns. For other call forwarding calling search spaces, we can either use base, giving us internal and E911 destinations, or one of the traditional calling search spaces with local, long distance, and international patterns. So the calling search spaces for allowed destinations can include either internal or external patterns, but not both. That's crazy talk. This solution doesn't meet Enterprise 20 requirements. We don't want E911 included in the call forward in calling search spaces, and we want to allow users the option to configure calling search spaces with either internal or local numbers. We also looked at the 10.0 SRND. The SRND provides some guidance. The Collab 10.x SRND provides some guidance. Always provision a call forwarding search space. Configure call forward busy and call forward no answer calling search spaces with values that allow them to reach the DNs for the voicemail pilot and voicemail ports but not external PSTN numbers. Configure both the call forward all and secondary calling search space for call forward all. Many companies choose to restrict forwarded numbers to internal numbers only. Always provision a call forwarding calling search space. Absolutely, we should do this and we will. The SRND says, Configure call forward busy and call forward no answer calling search spaces with values that allow them to reach the DNs for the voicemail pilot and voicemail port, but not external PSTN numbers. The calling search space for voicemail is configured via the voicemail profile, so this makes no sense. Also, the DNs for voicemail ports should not be reachable directly. We'll talk about class of service for voicemail integration later in the drawing. We assume internal numbers are meant to be included, but this doesn't let users forward calls to their cell phones or other local external numbers. You need to understand your requirements. There's a checkbox for forwarding to voicemail. The calling search space drop-down boxes under call forward and call pickup settings do not control call forwarding to voicemail when this box is checked. The voicemail profile under directory number settings controls access to voicemail. If the voicemail checkbox under call forward and call pickup settings is checked, the call is forwarded to the voicemail pilot for that profile. The calling search space associated with the voicemail pilot is used. We'll have more on this later. The SRND also says configure both the call forward all and secondary calling search space for call forward all. Many companies choose to restrict forwarded numbers to internal numbers only. We'll certainly configure both calling search spaces, even if we make them the same. We won't leave any of these fields blank. Restricting forwarded numbers to internal numbers means users can't forward all to their cell phones or other external numbers. You need to understand your requirements. What are your requirements? Do we let users configure some or all of their destinations themselves? What destinations can be configured for the different conditions? And what calling search spaces should we apply? What will our end user training look like? What will we tell our users? The CUCM is a collaboration product. The whole point is to facilitate collaboration. One way to facilitate collaboration is to maximize the chance of calls being successful. Placing excessive restrictions on a confusing call forwarding scheme is not going to help. If our users make themselves more reachable with a flexible self-service call forwarding deployment, then we can pat ourselves on the back. Can we implement that? Our first consideration is whether users configure some or all of their destinations themselves. 
Call Forward All is of no value if users can't configure it. In most cases, users expect this feature and it must be provided. For other call forwarding conditions, we have two choices. We configure these destinations for them. In this case, everyone gets the same configuration, go to voicemail, and the destinations are restricted to internal numbers. This is the simplest solution to deploy by far. Or they configure their settings themselves, but we restrict the destinations using the appropriate calling search spaces. In this case, we need to be able to explain to users how call forwarding works. Our second consideration is what destinations can be configured for the different conditions. What destinations can be configured? We'll never allow call forwarding to E911. Will we allow call forwarding to local numbers? For all conditions? Will we allow call forwarding to additional destinations for the conditions where the user has to log in? Do we need to configure lines differently for different kinds of users? Why block call forwarding to E911? No one would be stupid enough to call forward to 911. The moment you say, no one would be stupid enough to do something, someone is already doing it, on purpose or by accident. We don't want to have to ever answer the question, how come 911 is allowed as a call forwarding destination? And blocking E911 calls is not difficult. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This playbook is continued in Dial Plan for Call Forwarding and Voicemail Integration Part 2. Part 2 discusses call forwarding implementation.